Upon our arrival in the Hot Springs, Arkansas, the local weather forecasters were predicting sunny skies for the next three days. I'll bet you can guess what really happened. Yep, it rained for three days. Fortunately, it wasn't cold, just real wet. Uh, I'm going to let High Class lead us through that, so when we get on up here, uh, if you want to do the introduction to Trailhead, I'll introduce you to High Class. And we're standing here at the uh, power line road, and High Class is going to lead us across this. What can we expect, High Class? Well, we, the trails are normally pretty mild, but thanks to Tropical Storm Francis, we get to do them in the rain. They'll add to the difficulty level, and we ought to have a real good day. Now you don't have a, a rain slicker on. Real jeepers don't need them. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Hot Springs, Arkansas receives over 50 inches of rain per year. I think we got half of that during our three-day visit. Our group is starting with 16 vehicles. After three days in the woods, we'll lose some of the vehicles to breakdowns, but nobody will give up because of the rain. We have four wheelers from Arkansas, Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, and of course, I'm from sunny California. Like most of our trips, the drivers build, repair, and navigate their own vehicles. In fact, this has become a hobby for most of these folks. Even though half of the people are meeting for the first time today, they'll rib each other if someone makes a mistake, but they'll always offer their help if someone gets stuck or breaks down. J.C. Carter, better known as Cactus, is driving his custom-built 1982 CJ7, an AMC 304 V8 with Howe fuel injection provides the power to a pair of 4 9-inch axles equipped with Detroit lockers. The custom front fenders and hood were designed to clearance the 39.5 by 18-inch barter tires. Cactus is running a 4-inch Trailmaster suspension kit with 488 gears and a T18 transmission. Tyron Thomas noticed his right front tire was not pulling and should have been with the Detroit locker. A quick inspection revealed the hub was not working. An easy fix if you carry a spare hub. Styron does. Well, I, I start. well, it's not too bad. Well, actually, it's fairly wet. This next hill was rutted by vehicles with 36 inch tall tires or larger. Anyone with less than 36 inch tires will need the work to stay out of those ruts. Our trail leader is running 35 inch tires and does a great job of keeping his vehicle up on the edges of the ruts. Mike Cox is running his throttle body injected 350 Chevy with a turbo 350 automatic transmission. 39 by 1850 boggers provide the traction. A 4-inch Trailmaster suspension kit gives his Jeep the lift. The front axle is a Dana 44, while the rear is a stock AMC 20. I decided to use the winch to drag my differentials across that rut that was stopping my vehicle from going any further. Yeah. 
Rick Franco is piloting his 1985 CJ7 with the stock six-cylinder motor and five-speed transmission. A four-inch Trailmaster suspension and one-and-a-half-inch body kit provide the lift and clearance for the 36 by 1250 Supersmart. John Bashir, better known as Air CJ, is driving a 1983 CJ7. The stock six-cylinder motor has HAL fuel injection to keep the engine running in those off-camera angles that Air frequently finds himself in. The front axle is a Dana 44, the rear axle is a Dana 60, and both are set up with 456 gears and Detroit lockers by Sam's Off-Road. Sam Patton's CJ7 is powered by a Tuneport 350 Chevy with a 700R4 automatic transmission. National Spring provided the four inches of lift, the fenders were trimmed and clearance the 39 by 1850 Barger tires. Tyron Thomas is driving an 87 Wrangler powered by a TBI 350 Chevy motor with Edelbrock headers and intake manifold. The 700R4 automatic transmission runs the power out to a pair of Dana 44 axles set up with 456 gears and Detroit lockers. Eric Detchen's driving his 1992 YJ with the stock fuel-injected six-cylinder motor. Both axles are set up with 411 gears and ARB lockers. The 33-inch Super Swampers provide the traction. Dan Curtis, better known as Over Easy, is running his 1984 CJ7. To give this stock six-cylinder motor more power, he installed a two-barrel Weber carburetor and Canyon air filter. The stock transmission runs the power out to 35 by 1250 Super Swampers, and the stock axles are set up with 411 gears and ARB air lockers. The Powerline Trail offers several obstacles to challenge our well-equipped group. On this one, you cross a small stream and then claw your way to the top of the hill on a slippery surface. Chris Roundtree drove up from Dallas, Texas in his 97 TJ. A 4-inch Procom suspension kit provides a lift. Chris is running 35 by 1250 BFG mud terrain tires. The stock front axle is set up with crew track, the rear with the lock right, and both have 410 gears. If you don't think this hill is slick, watch Dan's Toyota slide backwards while his tires are spinning forward. Yeah, would you do that for me? Yeah. Chris Reeves is piloting his Toyota pickup powered by a Chevy 4.3 injected V6. The automatic transmission is a turbo 350. Both axles are set up with 529 gears and Detroit lockers. A Marlin crawler provides plenty of low gear.
Curtis will never make this hill without locking in those ARBs. Our group is headed over to the last obstacle of the day, Radiator Hill. I gotta tell you, the two cameramen and myself are pretty wet at this point. That snapping noise was a left front axle. Air CJ will have that fixed tonight and he'll be back on the trail in the morning. Gary Detchen is running a 1979 CJ7 powered by a 350 Chevy TBI motor. The automatic transmission runs the power out to 488 gears and Detroit lockers. The 36 by 1250 Super Swampers provide the traction. Yeah,
way. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Whoa! How much, let's see how much water is really in there. Whoa! <laughs> Where's your raincoat at? I think it's a stinky raincoat. He's a real jeeper. Yeah, that's another real jeeper. I heard that. Easier, we headed for the wall. Yeah, they, they said that was the only gate they going to leave open, man. I thought it was worth a shot to see if they put one up down there yet. Yeah, or... Hey, it looks like you got a little wet. Just a little. You're going to have to wash that shirt again, I think. Yeah, yeah. Did life get any better than this? No. We could be working. We could be working. In order to reach the highway, our group needed to climb a short section called the wall. By the end of the first day, most of us were pretty tired and all of us were soaking wet. After dinner that evening, most of us met at Walmart in search of more ring gear. Yeah. Where are we headed today? Oh gosh, we're going to fabric shop. Fabric shop? <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Eric. So we got the easy stuff out of the way yesterday. Today we're going to... We're just going to step right in the middle of it. We're going to wade right in the big middle of it. Well, winch cable, I guess. Looks like High Class has an onboard rain gauge. Yeah, I saw you had a cup yesterday yeah. bailing water out, huh? Yeah. I'm tired of bailing water. <laughs> You've got a little water in there. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen one sealed that well before. I talked to one. You know, it's almost like, uh, like Weyerhaeuser and some of these guys that uh, have trouble with dumping, you ought to have an entry road that some hill climbed that nobody's going to get up unless they got a four-wheel drive. Well, that's pretty much the story on this one that we're going in at right here today. Uh, this is one entryway into this area that we're going to be running. And they've thought about putting the gate there. They've got kind of a trench dug across it. But uh, they're not going to go, you're not going to go anywhere in there anyway unless you got one of these. <laughs> I'm not sure we will anyway. You're not sure we're going to get very far, huh? I'm not real sure about that. It, it, uh, you can drive right up it, and then you could not. I've been over here both ways. I've drove right up it, and then I've had to winch up it. But you'll see right as we turn off, people just been back, backing in there and throwing their trash out. I'm going to go ahead and just ease on into the start of the hill, and everybody can lock in there and what do the deal or whatever. Yeah, that's what I'd like to do. Just go on to the bottom of the hill, then we'll all stop. Uh, I'm standing at the bottom of Fabric Softener with Dan Curtis. How you doing, Dan? Good. Now, I guess you got a heck of a hill for us here. Yeah, it's a pretty good hill. <laughs> One of our better ones. Now, what does it do? Uh, it's a uh, couple of short spans of hill with a lot of rock, a lot of loose rock, big rock, and a couple of ledges. But now, the two main obstacles are kind of in the middle, then, that, the root and that ledge. Right. Well, there'll probably be some winching done today. Uh, no doubt. Now, there's a reason you guys like to come up uh, fabric softener here into this area. Is it the hub? It, it's, a, it's a hub to all your other trails? Right. Basically, when we get to the top, we're on a mountain ridge where we can go to all our other trails real easy. Well, great. I'm anxious to try it. All right. So let's do it. Yeah! 
After a couple vehicles attempted to climb fabric softener, it became quite apparent that only those 4x4s with giant tires were going to make it to the top in the rain. Mike's 39 by 1850 boggers is what it takes to get over this one. J.C. Carter is also running 39-inch boggers. Watch how he stops and then starts off again without backing down the hill. Now that's impressive. We've got here, uh, Curtis. Uh, we've got two hills right off Little Rock Highway. That's what we call them, Little Rock Highway hills. Okay. And we'll climb one, come down, and about halfway up this hill, we go to the Devil's Staircase. Hey, it sounds like fun. Let's do it. All right.
name of the hill that we're coming up to now? Uh, the one we're coming up to now is called Devil's Staircase. Uh, I've only been over here one time, so I don't know how much it changes. Uh, that got its name because of some steps, huh? It's got several steps. Uh, we had some people bring us over here with Jeeps and showed it to us, and they wouldn't even attempt to climb it, and they, they were calling it the Devil's Staircase. When Keith Herndon is not driving his big rig, he's in his 93 Wrangler. The stock 4-liter motor sends the power through an automatic transmission and out the axle set up with 456 gears and lock rights. Goodyear 35 by 1250 MTs provide the traction. Keith's next upgrade is a supercharger. Suddenly our trail leader came to a stop. This fallen tree is blocking the last stretch of road before Devil's Slide. The sad part about it is no one's packing a chainsaw. Without a chainsaw, our group had no choice but to turn around. I guess this means I'll need to make a return trip to Hot Springs. Oh darn. Next we headed to Surprise Gully. There are plenty of areas to go four-wheeling around Hot Springs. In order to become familiar with the area, I recommend attending an organized event or getting some of the local boys to show you around. Joe Rivas is navigating a 93 Wrangler with the stock four-cylinder motor. Both axles are reverse cut 44 set up with 538 gears and lockers. The front differential is equipped with an ARB while the back is set up with a Detroit locker.
We couldn't reach Devil's Slide, so our group headed over to Surprise Gully. Dan and I are standing here at the bottom of Surprise Gully. There's a big ledge over here. There is a go-around on it, which I think most of us will end up taking. But after that ledge here, what, do we, what can we expect after that? Uh, there's another section in uphill that's like the double whammy, several series. It's going to be wet and slick. And then we're basically on the top of the hill? Right. Once we get to the top, we'll run the ridge briefly and then start down. And that'll keep us busy? Should. We've got a good gully washout to go through with lots of big boulders, rock crawling. Don't you just hate to follow somebody who walks over the obstacle in front of you? At least he struggled a little on the upper section. Well, I'm going around this one before I break something. Mike decided to go around this one. It's not easy to bypass an obstacle, but you got to find the right balance between being aggressive and being patient.
Rather than back down without an engine running, Rick Franco decided to winch from here. While Rick Franco finished winching over the ledge, the rest of us entertained ourselves with a rattlesnake skin. I'm sure glad we didn't run into the previous owner of this skin. I'm six foot. I don't have the top. Y'all better get out the way! It didn't take Chris very long to figure out what he was going to do, bypass. Styron decided to join him. I'm driving my 1956 CJ6 powered by a TBI 350 Chevy engine. This was one of my last trips on the ND 4500 transmission before I changed to a 700R4 automatic. The rear Curry 9 inch and the front Dana 44 from Tri-County are set up with 48 gears and Detroit lockers. The new K-Line top is keeping me dry. Rick Curtis is running an 82 CJ7 powered by a 384 350 Chevy. The SM420 transmission runs the power out to a Lockride equipped 44 front axle and a rear Ford 9 inch equipped with a Detroit locker and Mosier axle. Dan Gable and his wife Chiquilla are in their 76 Toyota FJ40. A 383 Chevy V8 gives it the power. Howl Engineering provides fuel injection. The transmission's an NV4500 and both axles are set up with 48 gears and Toyota lock rights. The tires are 36 by 1450 Swampers. Come on around there and help you? Uh, uh we, we can get it. Let me figure out what's wrong with it. Can't figure out what's wrong with it yet. Okay, well, we're going to meander out to the end of this trail. Just stay in touch and let us know if you need people. Uh, okay. Occasionally, it would stop raining long enough for us to get a look around. Fortunately, the temperature wasn't too cold and it wasn't too hot. Otherwise, this would have been one miserable trip. You can tell how steep and slippery this is by watching the vehicle slide backwards.
what you can't see is the steep drop off on the other side of Rick Franco's Jeep. If he slipped off, it would get ugly. That's scary. You see what you got to go down into over? That's This is our last hill for the day. The objective is to slide down to the bottom, turn around, drive through the water, and then try to get back on top. What a deal.
this is one of those times that persistence paid off. 